Kia ora, I'm David Chastin with 98.9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This is we get everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock with news global full employment just goes on and on. First in the US, Americans are in their last week of their summer holidays and heading towards the crucial final third of 2022 with rising economic uncertainty. That's because housing markets are slowing quickly and mortgage interest rates are rising. In fact, rates for this past week turned up again after a few weeks of relief. But by, like most consumers, negative news weighs heavier than positive news. But there are positives, even in the global circumstances, and a lot of them. The mood should be upbeat, even if it isn't. New American jobless claims fell again last week to only 184,000, and well below what was expected. There are now 1.4 million people on these benefits, a new modern low. Just one year ago, there were 12 million people on these benefits, so the improvement has been epic. It is not a metric reported much these days, but we shouldn't lose sight of the achievement. Meanwhile, the second estimate of the US GDP result for the second quarter was released and that brought a small improvement. Away from the starter, all eyes are on the Powell speech at Jackson Hole in a central bank gathering organised by the Kansas City Fed. In Canada, it's probably worth noting that weekly earnings there rose faster than expected in June and notably faster than for May. The overall gains are not keeping up with inflation though, but some are however, with factory wages up 6.9% year on year and wages for people in professional and technical jobs up almost 11%. And China rushed out more economic stimulus with a further 1 trillion yuan set of policy measures to try and rebuild some growth, guard against pandemic policies and try to fix the corrosion in their property markets. And Germany also reported its second quarter economic activity, and in contrast with the US, it expanded, and expanded a bit more than expected. Freight rates for container shipping fell at a faster pace last week, but although it is 40% lower than the September peak, these rates are still 60% above the five-year average. Freight rates for bulk cargoes fell even faster last week. The US Treasury 10-year yield starts today at 3.03% and down 8 basis points from this time yesterday in a waiting power speech. And the price of gold will open today at $1,758 an ounce, which is up $9 from this time yesterday. And oil prices start today at just on $93 a barrel in the US, which is $1.50 lower, while the international Brent price is still just over $99 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar will open today at 62.3 US cents and a half a cent higher than this time yesterday. Against the Australian dollar, we're lower at 89.3 Australian cents, and while this is only a small slip since yesterday, it is in fact the weakest against the Aussie since October 2017, a five-year low. Against the euro, we've risen slightly to just on 62.4 euro cents. That all means our trade weight in the next starts today at 71.3 and a 30 basis point firming. Get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston.